I will say that Bill Cosby and the Cosby Show promoted a very conservative idea of what black art is. And it was it was black art to actually uphold the ideal of the middle class. It's, you know, it's the ideal of, of, of stability. And I understand that that ideal was being created to counter all the negative stereotypes that were being put out in the media against us. But I think a lot of that was just as damaging as, as anything else. You know, we are not all positive. We are not all negative. We're human beings and we live in gray areas. You know, we live in the gray zone. Every bit of humanity lives in that gray zone. And we can't start all of having all our art production respond to that. That Cosby has contributed greatly, him and his wife, not just that Cosby show, but I think Camille, as much as he did, if not more, have contributed to the furtherance and the, the, the continuing uh, promotion of African American and African diaspora art. And they are to be commended for ever for that. We need more people like them. We need patrons of the arts like them if we're going to survive as a culture. We need people to support our cultural production. And that's not to take anything away from them on that level. But at the end of the day, we don't also need culture police limiting who people are. Uh, the book I'm reading now is a book called Plutopia. It deals with the music of Sun Ra, Duke Ellington, and, and Anthony Braxton. And what was funny, I was reading how Amiri Baraka felt about Anthony Braxton's work. And he felt that Anthony Braxton's jazz work was uh, uh, whitewashed and awful Thomas. Well, I think Braxton was one of the most innovative jazz composers ever. But he was going so far out there that people did not recognize the blackness because the blackness was beyond the stereotype. And therefore, he got criticized for, quote, unquote, not being black from a nationalist perspective, as if the black nationalists know what blackness is, as if they're the only ones who have the idea of what blackness is. No one can make that determination. What was promoted was really what the show was about. So I mean, the show was about an uh, upwardly mobile, upper middle class family living their life. The art that they put on the walls was, was reflective of their class. And that's what it was. Like I said, it would have been great to get out the get out the living room and go to an art museum on the show, where they could have had dialogue. It would have been great to have things take place beyond that. It would have been great to have Elizabeth Catlin take the guest appearance on the show. You know, I mean, I'm not here to fully criticize this. I just have a, a big issue with how we often want to basically take the conservative route when it comes to promoting popular black art. Uh, or what we want to consider popular black art. And I think if you take the time to explain the innovative work of people like Bob Scott, if you take the time to look at the work of people like Raymond Saunders, if we expand the dialogue of what black is and what black was and what black will always be, I think we'll be a healthier, uh, uh, healthier individual in the long run. There is no monolithic black culture. There is no monolithic black class. And there is no monolithic black art parents raised them to believe in a disposable culture and not to believe in, in, in cultivating legacy and evaluation. And that's on, that's on us. We can't blame nobody for that. We can't even blame the economy or poverty on that because brothers in poverty will find a way to put some $10,000 rims on their hoops. They'll find a way to put all kinds of stuff into disposable culture that has no legacy and no value in it. So that comes down to self-education. That comes, but in order for self-education, you need to have some coherence of the culture. And that's where African Americans are at a standstill. We're the only ones always be arguing about whether we post this or post that. We're the only ones be posting up. You don't never hear nobody talking about post-white, post-Asian, post-Hispanic, but we run around talking about black, post-black because we ain't never been comfortable with being niggas in America. And why should we be? And then when we try to figure out who we are, we want to fight over that too. Because half of us are very happy to be uh, uh, white Negroes. Many of us are very happy to be anything but, but, but we. And we're never going to have any coherence. So you can't compare us to other cultures who come here. 
when somebody comes here from India, they come from a culture they love and respect. As far as the religious tradition, as far as the, the dress, as far as the food, they respect themselves. Even if they hate the politics of their culture, even if they hate the politicians in their culture, they love themselves. They love themselves. We are still fighting over self-love. Bell Hooks writes about it, Ellen. I love the way she writes about it. You know, we, we, we are suffering from post-traumatic stress syndrome. And we don't see art as one of the weapons we can use to get ourselves right. But in uh, this book by John Mason, called uh, Order of the Reason, 550 Year of Praise Zone, I think it has one of the most potent lines ever in it. It says, art has been the most effective weapon we have used to combat oppression and colonialism since we've been here. We have used our art to conquer when nothing else we did could have conquered. And that's important. But a lot of times the people who are in power, mainly the presidents and most of these HBCUs, don't give a fuck about art, don't give a fuck about culture. To them, culture is a paycheck. You know? And how can, how can we use, use art to, to come back to the Basically, cultural production is the key to self, self-preservation. Cultural production and cultural safety. How do we do it? We educate our youth, we educate our college-age students, and we don't leave out the parents and the grandparents. We make a whole list of attempts to get out for the arts like we got out for the vote during the Civil Rights Movement. And if you don't think it's important, then look at what TV portrays you as, and look at how your kids will emulate the worst common denominator of what they consider black culture, not the best common denominator. If you don't think we're losing the battle aesthetically, all you got to do is look at the white teens and the sagging pants showing their hands. That's all you got to do. All you got to do is look at how once how a young brother talks about a young woman in this culture. And all that's based on aesthetics, what they perceive on the television set. And that's aesthetics. That's art. That's art being used as a weapon against us rather than used as something to uplift us. So it's all important. Ooh. Brother want to fix it. I mean, look at Lil Wayne. We done went from the earliest black music was minstrel music, and now we done got back to Lil Wayne, which is high paid minstrel music. So we went from minstrelsy back to minstrelsy. And that's not to take away from his creativity. Awesome, awesome artist. But what the hell is he talking about? Really? And he can donate a hell of a lot of money and raise a lot of money to kind of help people in New Orleans. But when you equate how many people he's hurt to how many people he's helping, let's, just, let's do the math. So that's the excuse a lot of people use. Every rapper I know got a foundation now so he can give a sum so to make his soul feel better about the fucked up music he's putting out in the world. I'll call everybody a bitch and a hoe, but I'll give money to some little kids for a summer camp, and I'm saying, I'm, it's all good. And I raise them to talk about bitches and hoes. And then they can give some money to some other niggas to make themselves feel good. Play the game. It's regardless of what anybody was trying to do, who actually did it. Oh, yeah. So, and, and I'm not just saying just one person. I mean, obviously. Oh, no, no, but he was, he was, but he, he created a platform of like right, patriotism. Right, exactly. So, exactly. So, so but... But that's a troubling question because then does that mean that the only way to engage that conversation is to do it through popular. that through that popular and conservative way? I mean, and unfortunately, it's, it's the answer has been since it hasn't really been done since. Right, the answer is I get it. No, that's so. The question I was asking was if it's true that Cosby was able to open a dialogue about black art and about black art patronage but was only able to do it through a particular conservative vision of what black art is, what does that tell us about what it takes to open up a dialogue about black art or any art? And, you know, and I don't know the answer to that, but if it's the case that he has been, let's just say, more successful than anyone else on a broad basis, on a broad cultural basis, then we're still in a place culturally. What that means is that we're still in a place culturally where our approach to art is still a retrograde conservative brush to art. Very much so. I mean, that, that's what that's telling us. And that's, and that's, that's the core of it. 
And let's be honest with you. What is at the root of that? The church. In my opinion. Mm-hmm. Most African Americans are conservative. Outside of the politics of the civil rights movement and our fight against Jim Crow, we were conservative just as much as any whites were. The only thing that made us progressive was fighting for our civil rights. 